Greetings, dear friends. It's another day in the Lord. How more blessed could they be? Somebody said, this is a good day in the Lord because of sunshine. No, if you get up in the morning, put your feet on the floor, it's a good day in the Lord. Look at who you are. Look at what's happening to you. Find something good about this day and you'll be much happier about it. We love you in the Lord, and this is the Christ Life Ministry coming your way to tell you about how another life belongs to human beings that God never intended them to live the life they were birthed with in the natural. So we have a new life to live called a new creation life, and I'm talking about that in the services we're having, in the, in the meetings we're having, and especially on this broadcast. Because I want you to come to know. I want the whole world to know that God intended to give everybody a new life. A new life. A new spiritual life. And he expected your old natural life to catch up with it. To honor it. Obey it. And live it. Well, that's what Christianity is all about. Christianity is not building buildings and everybody going to Sunday school and church. No, Christianity is a group of people who have another life in them. They are new creatures. They're not old creatures refined, made better, rejuvenated, or helped. They are new creatures in Christ Jesus. And so I've got to talk about that because I think it's it's laid at the feet of ministries long enough. It's laid at the feet of churches long enough. We haven't done anything with it. It's time we open up the door and let people see what it is God has done through the cross of Jesus Christ to human beings. God never intended for any human being to continue to exist on this earth without Christ in them. And if they don't get Christ in them, the most precious promise we know, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. You see, there's only two ways to go. You can go to Christ and get a new life, or you'll perish. I hate to say it like that. So many people today thought in their intellectualism they had stomped out hell, stomped out the devil's work, stomped out evil. No, they haven't stomped out anything. But I'll tell you what has happened. The grace of God has overwhelmed everything the devil could drag up. Everything intellectuals trying to defame Christianity can bring up. Listen, it's a new life. It's an abundant life. It's an everlasting life. We need to talk about it. We need to get our minds off of our failures and, and how short we are in coming to be rich or famous or important. Some people thought if we just got rich and famous, we would be good Christians. No, we went the other direction then because we didn't need that to be a good Christian. Well, I'm going to have to get on my subject again. We're in the third chapter of Ephesians, and I'm talking about the second verse of this third chapter. What this verse says is, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God. Now, I said a bit about this yesterday on the broadcast, but I want to, I want to make it stronger today. Most people have not heard of the dispensation of grace. What is a dispensation? It's a God allotted time for him to accomplish some part of his eternal plan. Now, I must tell you, there have been five dispensations before ours. Five dispensations have existed on this earth before the dispensation of grace. And all five of them, listen to me, all five of them were failures, some colossal failures. It was a simple fact that people could not obey God, would not obey God, would not do what God asked them to do, gave them power to do, gave them money to do. They just didn't do it. They didn't love Him. They didn't love Him enough. Kind of that way today, even in Christianity, people have a hard time doing what the Bible says because they just don't love Him enough. And so this second verse is brought out, Have you heard of the dispensation of the grace of God? I've been preaching well over 60 years. And I kind of listen to what some others are saying. 
And I've got to tell you, I very seldom hear a message, a sermon, or even a book written on the dispensation of grace. It's like they're scared to death of it. Because if they preach that, they can't have law anymore. They they water down the law with grace, and grace is watered down by the law. You mix grace and law together, and you created a poison. You created a poison. As Charles Spurgeon said, I'd much rather see them be law people and never know about grace than to mix the two together because grace has to do with the final works of Christ on the cross. He said, let's not mix it. Let's not mess it up. Let's be one or the other. And so Paul said, if you heard of the dispensation of grace, which has been given to me to give to you. Did you know that? Did you know that there is a period of time all the way from Christ's death on the cross up until this moment, which has been given to born-again believers, been given to those who love the Lord? He gave that period of time to us called the dispensation of grace. I'm not ashamed to say I believe in grace. I'm not ashamed to say I wouldn't trade one ounce of grace for a bucket full of law or a bucket full of religion or a bucket full of man-made idealisms. I wouldn't trade an ounce of grace for. So Paul says that it's been given to me to give to you. Now, he didn't say this just one time in his writings. He said it several times in different ways. But you know, I found that most Christians have missed what he said. He didn't mean that he had a good gospel and it needs to be compared with a gospel that Jesus of Nazareth gave us or it needs to be compared with a, a gospel that was back in Amos's or Isaiah or Jeremiah's day, not at all. He said, this gospel has been given to me specially, especially today to give to you. This gospel is given to me to give to you. That's what the epistles are about. Paul's epistles are special words from Jesus Christ to Paul, to you and I. And we can thank God for Paul, because if he had not done it, the whole church today would be under the law. There wouldn't be any of them smart enough to pray, God, give us a message just for this dispensation of time. This is a precious dispensation. Started out with us becoming completed human beings at the cross, and it ends with these same human beings being carried up to meet Jesus in the air and be in the Father's house forevermore. What a precious day this is called grace. So Jesus said, I'm giving it to you, Paul. I'm going to give it to you, Paul, and you give it to the people. You take it and give it to the people. I'm giving it to you to give to them. You think Paul was capable? Why did God choose Paul? Because he was the meanest man on earth. That's why God chose him. He was out destroying followers of Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. Why in the world did God choose him? He had two strikes against him already. How in the world could he carry out God's provision? Because God had one thing to prove, that nobody, no one and nobody is able to be more sinful, more ungodly, more wicked than the Apostle Paul was in destroying followers of Jesus Christ. And I just wanted everybody to know that the grace of God reached him, saved him, made a apostle out of him made him the voice 
to the period of dispensation of grace made him a voice to all of the born again. You get it? Was given to Paul to give to you and I. What if he had failed? Well, I don't even think of it. If he hadn't given us these things in the scriptures, no telling where we'd be today. Maybe hopelessly lost like so many of the Jews were the last 400 years before Jesus of Nazareth came. Don't you see it, dear friend? He's God's man. Well, somebody says, I don't follow men. If you don't follow Paul, you're going to follow a very normal man named Moses. In this book, you either follow Moses or you follow Paul. Moses is dead, he's gone. Paul's dead and he's gone. But the message of Paul fits this dispensation. And to pull up anything that has to do with Moses is awful. It's awful. Foolish. When Christ has given us his all and all. I need to take on one more verse today. Let's go to verse 3 of this third chapter. It says, How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in a few words. I got so much to say on this subject of revelation. Because revelation is the reason why the church has failed God in these last days. Miserably failed. The church has not preached the grace of God as it ought to be preached. They've written up by a handful of men in each denomination and church and way of living. Earthly have written up a set of rules and regulations and laws and so forth. When we had written for us by Jesus himself through the Apostle Paul the way that we ought to live. Listen to me. How did Paul get this message? How is it that the one man's message that is different from anything else written in this book, a God that is doing things he never did before, a God that has hope for this world that he never had before, how could he Establish that. How could he get that over to us? Came by revelation. I'm not talking about John's revelation. I'm not talking about the book of Revelation. I'm not talking about the end time. Praise God, in grace there is no end time. I'll have to close on that note. I need to say a lot about it. I may pick up on that very same thing tomorrow morning. But listen to me. A revelation is what changed this world. That's what changed human beings from being sinners bound for hell to being offsprings, direct offsprings from Almighty God, His children, with His seed in them. How did Paul get this message? By that revelatory power. Revelation. I'm bringing it to you through the written word. I don't ever propose that God would use me as he did Paul. For God didn't need to give me a message of my own. He gave me the message direct from Jesus through the Apostle Paul to bring to you. It's called revelation and every born again believer can and must have a revelation of this thing I'm talking about think about it as I leave the air today we joyfully in the Christ life ministry pray for people that are in need need help from the Lord we'll add our faith and prayer to yours 
write us a line, give us an email, tell us that you're listening to this program and that God is using it where you are. We'll thank you for it. And I'll pray right now in my heart that every one of you will have a good day and it'll be the best day you ever had in Christ. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.